Uh, today I'll be basing my speech on the Mythbusters, as if you guys show, saw the TV show. And uh, the, the myth I'm going to be busting is that um, in app ads harm user experience. Well, um, it can be true, um, and it's actually really misleading <laughs> that um, they actually do um, harm user experience. Um, they may and may not. Uh, if you use the ads correctly and if you use them smart, then they will not actually um, harm your user experience, and they may even improve the retention rate and the um, uh, lifetime value. Um, so here I'm going to talk, be talking about a little bit about uh, theory of the monetization and then I'm going to go more into practice and show the use case that we recently did with one of our publishers. <clears throat> so there are two uh, ways to monetize um, applications, the paid applications and the free. So basically uh, when it's a paid application, um, it can be a good idea, or it used to be a good idea a few years ago when uh, we first started having uh, smartphones and, um, and such, but um, right now there are over four, bill uh, 4 million apps on Google Play and um, App Store, <clears throat> and 90% of those apps are free. So if you want to... Um, if you want to download a game, chances are you are not going to download a paid game and you're going to go and look for um, analogs of this game, but that are free or free to play games. So I would uh, steer clear from the paid um, monetization methods, but um, if you are lucky and your game gets featured, uh, then there are tons of ways to get um, many users uh, for the, even for the paid apps. But uh, that way, you, ha you always have to make sure that um, everything uh, in your app is top-notch and everything works without any crashes and uh, the user experience as good as it could be. Because otherwise, it could result to this. Uh, the game got featured. A person bought a game, paid $5, and was left really disappointed um, without a good experience. So um, the next monetization method is the free games or free-to-play games. And um, there are two, also two ways to monetize those games. There are uh, in-app uh, purchases, as you'll, I'm sure, know, and there are advertisement. And um, advertisement can lead to good or bad experience of the user experience as well. If you monetize an advertisement, you want to make sure that you follow exact steps to make sure that user experience uh, is not harmed by that and that user uh, is not dropping after a few seconds or for after a few minutes of playing your game, uh, of your free game. Uh, so you want to um, make sure uh, that you follow these steps. Okay, well, this is just an example of actually um, a good review, even though the ads were used. So I'm going to give you a few tips on um, ad, ad monetization that uh, probably will not harm user experience. So will help you when you experience and using them right, uh, do um, improve the retention rate and improve the uh, lifetime and even bring uh, additional revenue from the ads. Uh, so if you um, if you use ads, make sure that you use a proper um, placement, and the placement uh, doesn't doesn't hinder the gameplay, and it's not covering the game, uh, and it's uh, the user doesn't have um, difficulties pressing buttons and the action buttons within your game. Um, the next uh, really good, and this is my favorite way to monetize the free apps. Um, uh, and that's what we did in Appodeal when we first started. We had a bunch of apps and we monetizing them uh, on interstitials. And we were only showing the interstitials and the um, natural rest periods. So when the level was over, we would show an interstitial uh, and then we would, the person would just click to close and just move on to the next level. And this is a really easy, really effective method to monetize um, a free app. Uh, without harming user experience, and you can even use skippable videos on those um, level ends. If you maybe use five or six interstitials, so a person just can close them really fast, and then skippable video, and they can close them after five seconds or so. 
Uh, next tip is uh, make sure that you cap frequency and you don't show those advertisements too often. Uh, because that was from my previous slide when the person was really disappointed when um, the, uh, the ad would just pop up every few seconds and in the middle of the game and um, make them die. And of course, it is can be really frustrating and disappointing. So make sure that you use the um, frequency because there is no ad that is worse of your users actually dropping. Um, a lot of demand partners offer pre-caching ads. So uh, when you use those demand, when you decide about the demand partner, about the monetization network, um, advertisement network, you want to make sure that um, they pre-cache the advertisement because users have very low patience for the slow loading games and even lower patience for slow loading ads. Nobody wants to wait for the ad to load and, um, uh, and then be shown especially if it's uh, in volunteer advertisement. Um, another good tip is to make sure that you segment your users and you want to break them down by new users and maybe you show less advertisement to the new users and um, you want to uh, show different advertisement for different categories of people, break them down by age, by uh, level of inco income, gender, and so on, and experience and show different types and different um, kinds of advertisements and even mix in different networks for those segments of users. <clears throat> and um, next really good tip, and um, it's kind of personal one, um, make sure when you uh, use advertisement in a kids app that you filter out the mature content uh, for, for your audience. Because if you guys, any of you have kids and your kid is playing a game and there is a, something maybe not X-rated but still inappropriate for a five-year-old to watch, it could be really frustrating and uh, will result in a bad review on the App Store or Google Play. Next uh, tip. It's appropriate for the games with the in-app purchases and for the games with in-app currency. Uh, it is a good idea to reward your user uh, at the end of the ad. It could be like a coin or uh, any kind of crystals or any kind of in-app currency that is useful for the user uh, to be used for, for, for the uh, following gameplay. And the most, uh, the most important tip is to experiment and to use add more networks, maybe delete other networks, add more ad, um, ad types, um, switch placements, mix and match all the different um, frequency and segment your users and do it um, and analyze. Analyze and make sure that it's working. So uh, I want to go deeper in the use case and show um, a pretty interesting case study that we did recently with our publisher that's called Web Games. Um, so, Web Games had a game in 2015. Web Games released a game that was called Ghost Town Adventures. And it was a really interesting game. It had um, a fairy. I played the game, I loved it. It's really interesting, really fun. I had, um, sorry, not a fairy. I had a girl that is coming to this town and she is trying to um, find out what happened with the town. And she goes to all the different houses, all the different rooms, and um, uh, picks up all the different uh, clues what happened to the town and frees the town from ghosts. Um, this game was uh, released in the fall of 2015, and in um, in a year it has over three million downloads. But the problem was that uh, all th this game was free to play, so it was only monetizing on selling uh, special skills and special uh, equipment to the user uh, to perform in the game later on in the game. So. Only about 5% of those users or less than that, uh, of course, were only paying um, to play. And the rest was not monetizing. So although it has a huge audience, had a 3 million daily active users, uh, sorry, 3 million downloads, um, it was not monetizing all that well. It was not bringing um, a lot of revenue. So the publisher <coughs> decided to experiment with advertisement. 
uh, they did the research, they, um, they analyzed the downsides of advertisement, and they saw that, uh, they decided, they came up with a three hypothesis. One of them would be that if you show ads too early in the game, it would harm the user experience and will cause most likely for user to drop uh, really fast uh, after the download, really shortly after the download. And, uh, it, and if you show the ad to the paying user, um, it will also uh, result in a low retention rate. So with these assumptions, they went in and they decided to do the use case for, they did a use case for two weeks and it involved 10,000 users, which was broken down into groups. Uh, in group A, the ads were shown to only, to, to all of the users right after downloads. Only new users were monetized in advertisement and they were shown every 30 minutes, uh, but it doesn't, didn't matter if the user was paying or not. And uh, in the second, Group, group B was the same amount of users, but the ads were only shown after about the one third of the plot of the game. So when the user was assumed not to be paying user, and user had a really low, con really low chance to convert into paying user. What is important to say here, actually, that um, the publisher did an interesting analysis, and they. Uh, twisted the road, they used rewarded videos with that deal, and they uh, they showed them and so well they, they fitted them so well in the game that it didn't um, hinder the gameplay it didn't um, it didn't interrupt the gameplay or in any way uh, they would show the ad up to the end of each level and it would be brought by a fairy as a gift from foreign land and the fairy would offer the user to show uh, the stories from the foreign land. Uh, and at the end of the, each story, give them a reward, um, you know, like the in-app uh, in currency, like crystal, that a uh, person would be using later on in the game. Uh, it was not, uh, it was not terrible. It was not intrusive, and users actually enjoyed it. And it resulted, it lasted for two weeks, and. Uh, it lasted for two weeks, involved 10,000 users, and these groups were analyzed by six parameters, whereas uh, average revenue per daily active users, uh, lifetime value, and a quantity of ad impressions, retention uh, rate, and the other one, the other two you can see right there on the wall, conversion and average session length. So against all of the assumptions that they had before, uh, they came to the results that Group A uh, obviously naturally had uh, more ad impressions because they were monetizing right, uh, an advertisement right from the beginning, but um, Group A made more in-app purchases, you know, even with the shown ads. So they were discovering the in-app currency and in-app perks uh, really early in the game, and they realized that they can spend very little money to get more of these stories to, not sorry, not stories, but more of these perks to come, even without the fairy that would show the stories every 30 minutes. And um, quantity of paying users were less in the group A, but transactions, the in-app transactions, purchase transactions were more in the group A. It resulted in the higher lifetime value and um, higher retention rate, and additionally, it brought ad revenue. So, uh, web games came to the conclusion that um, advertisement will not harm user experience if used uh, right and if it fits uh, within the game. And um, it actually will not negatively increase retention rate and lifetime value. And the chances are it would actually increase it. Right now, what's happening now, web games is uh, still monetizing advertisement. It still uses uh, same method as they discovered was really profitable and was really working for them. And um, they still keep experimenting. They repeat this experiment with the new users over and over again, every now and then, and uh, it still shows the same results. Still comes back with the same results. So here's just the tips that I gave in the beginning of the speech. Uh, I'm not gonna repeat them, but you can take a picture, or you can note, take a note, or... And, well, this is my last slide, and I think, I hope that um, I busted the myth of 
the advertisement harming user experience and I hope that you enjoyed it, enjoyed the presentation. I hope it was useful. And if you want to learn more, um, please uh, come to our booth, this 101, and we have a lot of people in our booth that can tell you more. And if you have any suggestions, tips, insults, feel free to shoot me an email. Have you found there's any benefit to purchasing ad skips where they pay a certain amount and never have to watch another ad again? Uh, we do. Um, uh, sometimes it actually works if you do the involuntary videos or involuntary ad format, and it works uh, for the paying users. But if you do that for the uh, as rewarded videos as the, as the um, uh, web games did, then uh, it will not it will actually neg negatively affect the user. So if you it, if you use the involuntary ad formats, that's a good idea to, after the first purchase is made, maybe not to show any ads for about two weeks or three weeks for this user, and then to start showing them again to um, to maybe um, motivate them to make another AI purchase or to still monetize the same user. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, otherwise, I guess Natalie is still around. Where's your booth again? I'm Look, sorry? Where's your booth again located? So uh, people can it's look located right in, um, in the entrance. It's uh, 101. And it's big, big red booths, and there are people wearing red. And, you know, okay. it says right here. It looks like this. <laughs> so come by. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot.